I was speaking with a friend today who wanted to see what I thought about, you know, other people coming at me and saying certain things. And I said, I don't have really much to say. I, that's not that's not me. I have stated something. This is a person who knew me at one of my tour stops. I told you guys that I had a uh, that I was on tour <laughs> with the federal government. My own my own problems, my inducing of it, me doing something to get me in trouble with the federal government. So I was in prison. And he was asking some questions. I said, this is kind of how I want to do things. This is how I think it's the right thing to do. There's, instead of having this knee jerk response on things, it just helps sometimes kind of sit, stop, wait, think about some things, and then just kind of give to the Lord and then let him advise you. I have this belief. Do I believe that, it, that it's this way 100% of the time? No, there are some times where you do have to not do what I'm getting ready to tell you. And that is let the Lord vindicate you. Let the Lord defend you. Oftentimes when someone has something to say or when someone wants to do something to you, there are times, there are opportunities when you can allow the Lord to take care of it. That requires, and I understand it, it requires some faith. It requires you to not do what you want to do. It requires you to not do what you say to do. And that's hard sometimes. It really is, especially if it seems like it might be life and death. And so I have this view. Now, someone says that I wasn't that way, especially when it came to my own legal case. Well, the truth of the matter is that was the case. I actually did say, you know what, Lord, you handle it however you want to do it. Now, obviously, I want you to not allow me to suffer the greatest consequence. No one wants to suffer the most. No one, anyone in their right mind would want to say, Lord, if I've got to suffer, can you ease the pain? Can you make it quick? Can you make it light? That always happens. Matter of fact, in most cases, it's not that way. But uh, I pled guilty because I felt like that, hey, I'm not innocent. I've done some wrong here. And so however, however it works out, I'm throwing myself, as we say legally, or on the mercy of the court. But also, Lord, I'm I'm throwing my hands, my body, my life, my everything I'm entrusting to your hands. Well, not so bueno in the very beginning, not so good in the beginning, because the judge gave me the maximum amount possible on a plea deal. 240 months. Can you imagine that? Never been in trouble with the law before, never had any issues, never. And I'm thinking that uh, I'm looking at two, three years, maybe four at the high end, possibly probation. And so I felt pretty good. And when the judge says, no, off with your head, you're through, you're out of here. Well, needless to say, I was surprised. I was shocked. I was in awe. But it also allowed me to kind of come closer to the Lord, more time with him. Now, what you do is in prison, you might make a case. You might present, hey, listen, I think based on the evidence that this isn't correct and so forth, whatever. And so uh, I filed an appeal. Filed an appeal. It takes its time. Let it, let, it, let it work through court and so forth. And I understand all of those things, whatever. Well, but Corey, is that is that you allowing the Lord to defend you? Well, again, doesn't mean that you always totally just subject yourself to everything. You are still allowed to cry out for some relief. And so this is my way of, of doing so. Lord, I'm putting this in your hands. You tell me, you, you work this out. As things went on, I'm spending more and more time in prison, moving around at the very, what looked like the worst possible moment, the worst possible moment. My mother had passed away. They had put me in the shoe or a uh, special housing unit. That is basically the hole where you take the person out of the general population and put them in a cell by themselves. Or in some cases, you may have two people in there and it's just you and this small room. There's a, a, a toilet. There might there might be a shower, depending upon the facility that, that you're at. Uh, maybe windows, maybe not. And you're stuck in there for 24 hours a day. Not a good look. Well, during this time, and it's just me and God, I did have my Bible, so I, I could I could read, but it's just me and God. Well, I get a letter. The letter says the letter came from the United States Court of Appeals said that your appeal appeal had been denied. Two to one, I believe it was the was the uh, <laughs> two to one is was the ruling, and so it was possible, as a matter of fact, even advisable that I would go ahead and file, um, citing new evidence to have the whole thing tossed out. On his face, everyone said you should win. What did I do? I said at that moment, you know what? No, I'm not filing anything. At that moment, 
And this was about six, seven years left on my sentence. No, God. Toss it away, threw it away. It's in your hands. Lord, as the psalmist says, you vindicate me. As a matter of fact, when we look at that passage to Psalms 26, 1, it says, Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. And here it is. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in your truth. You can only really pray that prayer if you have been walking with the Lord. And that's it. That's the, that's the secret, guys. If you are if you know, and only you know, better than anyone else, if you've been walking in him, only you know how you have behaved, how you have spent time with him. And so it's really kind of a test. Try me, examine me, as he says, and see. But how does he start off by saying, what's the first thing he says? He says, vindicate me, O Lord. I do want relief. So when you let the Lord defend you, it's not saying that you don't want to, to get any relief, that you want to take whatever comes. That's not the point. It's not Give me it all because you don't have the ability to take all that can be given to you or put on your shoulders. But what you're doing is you're saying, Lord, if I'm wrong, you'll deal with me. If I'm right, you release me. However it is. Now, can I tell you what happened? This was 2019 that I'm in the shoe. 2019. I'm in the shoe and I get that and I decided, no, Lord, I'm putting it in your hands. I had no idea what was going to happen. Less than one year later, I am released. Five years prior to my actual release date. So this is where you know trusting, I can at least say so, that trusting in the Lord absolutely wait, works. He says in Galatians 6, don't be weary in doing good for in due season at the appointed time, you shall reap a reward. That is, if you do not faint. So keep doing what you're supposed to do. Do not faint. God will, if you want him to, if you let him, he will vindicate you. Now, it will not be the way that you want him to. It will not be as soon. It will not be with uh, as little or as few amount of issues, pain, and so forth, discomfort that you would want. There's going to be some sort of discomfort, but that's to grow you. I said one of my favorite verses is actually a few verses put together that I have in the Bible come from Psalms 3. This was one of the prayers that I had all throughout the Bible. I mean, all throughout my stay in prison. Psalm 3 he says, Lord, how they have increased who troubled me. Lord, how are they increased that troubled me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. There are many people says, you know what? He's gone. He's out here. There's there's no help. Not even God can help him. Nope, he's through. But look what he says. He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. That is amazing. That was my prayer. That was my cry. Look what he says in, in four. I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy heel. So there's this peace, this comfort from just in some cases, giving it to God. And so when someone has something to say, something to do, someone comes at you in all, all sorts of ways, it's easy. The natural knee-jerk response is to respond. Folks want to know what you got to say. Folks want to know what are you going to do about it. You want to know. You don't. I'm not going to let the person get away with this. Someone pat, cuts me off in traffic. I can't let them get away with that. Someone says this about me. Someone stole this. Someone made this comment. Okay. There's no need to. This is where sometimes maturity steps in and says, you know what? I got this because maybe what's happening to you, you deserve. Or maybe there's someone better equipped at handling it. Does that mean that you never, ever, ever defend yourself? No. Does it mean you never, ever speak a word? No, that's not the case because we see that. Most often, though, the pattern that we see of even Jesus or the disciples, the apostles. We don't see them defending themselves a lot. We do see there are times when they do. They do so for the sake of the gospel. At some point in time, you might, I might have to, might not, who knows? But the first response, the, the, the automatic response would be, Lord, you take this. And depending upon your walk with him, you might understand, you might be moved to go ahead and make a defense, but you make your defense not of yourself, 
you make your defense of the word and why you say or why you do what you do as it relates to the word, not for defending yourself. There's nothing worthy about you that requires you to be defended. We're no good. There's nothing special about us. But his word, uh, that's different, which is why we, we will always defend doctrine. We'll always defend the word of God. But to get up and defend yourself, now it becomes about you. And I just don't want to do that uh, because thus far I've tried to make it about him and I'm still home today. While there's still a year, two years, I'm sorry, left on my imprisonment. But I'm here because guess what? God can vindicate you if he so chooses, but he'll only do so if you are walking with him. So I hope this has been helpful. He and I were having the conversation and I said, you know what? This might be something that somebody else might get some benefit from. Might not be a lot. Hopefully it will be, but hopefully you can see I'm living, I'm a living example, living proof of trusting in him, letting him handle it first works a lot. It really does. Amen.